What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. However that may land, however that may go, I appreciate you being here. So anyway, I uploaded a video the other day and a lot of you guys chimed in and gave me your input, thoughts, views, opinions, advice, perspective. And I really appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to take everything into consideration. I guess I'll just fill it out, figure it out as I go. But one guy chimed in with a comment that really wrecked my day. Now, I am sure that he was doing this out of a place of love. Like, just letting me know that maybe there were some issues with my camera settings, which sent me into like an OCD fueled frenzy. Now, the thing is, I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be a videographer. I don't claim to know everything. I didn't go to school for any of this stuff. I just picked up a camera and started making videos. Long story short, I've been playing with my cameras for like the last two and a half, maybe even three hours. Now, all my cameras are on manual settings. So I switched over to the manual aperture setting and I'm running like an ISO of 4000. That might sound high for a low light environment, but if I go any lower, I feel like things just look weird. Now, here it is. I'm crying out for help. So if anybody watching this video happens to use a DSLR or do videography or understand cinematography or understand lighting also, maybe you can kind of give me some guidance. Some help. And yes, to answer your question before you ask, I've watched a bunch of videos on this topic. And the one thing, the common denominator is you're supposed to shoot in an extremely low ISO when you're in a low light setting. However, this is a Sony A7C full frame camera. So the ISO on that camera versus say this older Sony, which is like a pocket Sony um, RV something, I don't know, uh, That that's way different. That's like maybe 640 ISO. And then there's an A6500 back here that shoots at this uh, this angle here. And it's a crop sensor. And it's every, every camera in here is different. But I feel like I've gotten a lot of the noise out. But did I, though? Different cameras, different color profiles, different glass. I mean, it's been kind of a challenge is all I'm saying. So if you have any tips, tricks, if you can give me sound advice, get me in the right direction uh, for this setup. I would appreciate it. So also one thing to note is I'm using a couple key lights. I have three Godox ES45s, one here, one here, and then obviously one back there. I have a couple overhead lights, which are just normal ceiling lights um, that I never turn on, but I did to try to help balance some of the lighting. I don't know. It. I got some unboxing I want to do. Um, so let's just jump into that. If you got something, drop it. So today there are a couple of things we're going to do. Uh, this came yesterday and this is the ls04 by gym arm extender for like uh, a light mount or a desk mount or whatever i i need one for a dedicated overhead shot to shoot down on this desk so that's first and foremost which is basically a ulanzi product for the record links in the description below you already know how i roll now, I won't be able to go buy a new Corvette off of it, but I do get a little something from it. So if you use my links, I greatly appreciate you. So feel free to click away. Now, it comes with two arms, basically. Um, so we take this one arm here and this other arm here. And this gives you options, right? So you have options with this. You can use just one arm or you can use the smaller arm here or you put them together i like to put them together it creates a bendable adjustable elbow if you will where basically you can use the ball head right there to go over you know 90 degree or whatever and i'm just going to mount this up here and then i've got to get a ball head for here uh so that i can have the dedicated overhead shot that shoots down on the table i had to pull these out of the other box over here because the other box just won't make it it's way too big one thing to note about this uh ls04 or ls04 is that if you want the entire setup right like let's say that you want to have the desk mount with the extended arm here um or the arm extender whatever um you can get it where it comes together and i'll have that link in the description below but all I needed was this. So we're going to set that off to the side. This is a massive gaming mouse pad. When I say massive, I mean it's massive. It's two feet by four feet. Why? Well, why not? But honestly, 
Uh, I'll tell you why, because I do a lot of product reviews right here on this table. And as you guys can see, there's like a minor glare and the lighting's kind of got like orange hues to it. So it's like warmer lighting, right? As far as the Kelvin goes. So I use warmer lighting and with the red, a lot of yellows get thrown around. And the other thing is, is that this has zero glare uh, and it just absorbs light. It looks cool. It's massive and I can put products on it and showcase products on a really cool giant mouse pad. That's pretty much the just of this guy here. Now, do you need a 24 by 48 uh, or a two foot by four foot mouse pad? Probably not, but you can get one if you wanted one. I did. Um, so it's doable and I think it looks really cool. And I think like, you know, for the overhead shot, this looking down. So to have products that you're showcasing with the camera directly overhead coming down, I think that's going to be pretty nifty guy. Pretty nifty. I like it. Um, I like it. I like it a lot, but, uh, I think it looks cool. What do you guys think? You can drop a comment. You can tell me how much you hate it. You can tell me how much it's just a waste of space and everything. You, whatever. Tell me. I, anyways. Here is a, here's a big deal here, buddy. You guys know what this is? This is a three and a half inch studio monitor Bluetooth speaker. I have one set of these already. These are, uh, I think you say Personius. Um, I have one set of these already on the uh, shelves over here by the TV. So I, I love it so much, right? That I wanted to have another set on this side of the room. So now, that's right, I'm going to be in surround sound. Now, for the folks that don't know what monitor speakers are, basically they're used in recording studios, uh, home theaters, just you name it. You can use them just about anywhere, but they're tuned to flat to where other speakers are tuned. So when you buy speakers for your stereo system at the house or whatever the case is, normally those are tuned and these are not. They are flat as can be, bass heavy. Um, they sound phenomenal, honestly. Uh, I, I love the way they sound to the point that this is the second pair uh, to show up here. So I'm into them. All right, let's get this box out of this box so that we can pull things out of the box. So you can see the packaging here. Now these are, like I said, these are Bluetooth. So you can actually connect it to your phone, uh, connect it to anything that's Bluetooth compatible. I personally wire them with RCA cables, which I've already got the RCA cables here and in place. You have your warranty information, just like uh, some foam pads that you can stick onto the bottom. Packaged really well. So they get to your house unscathed. <laughs> and here's one speaker that looks like that's the controlling speaker. And then that is the secondary speaker. And that's everything that's in the box there. So let's get that out of here. All right, and then we'll take this plastic over of here. Go. Now this speaker is the secondary speaker. Uh, so you guys can see that it only has regular speaker cable um, females on the back, positive, negative. And then we'll get this other one here out of the plastic. I feel like something's missing. I need to check that box um, because obviously I overlooked, there has to be another box in there that has the power supply. And uh, I think it comes with uh, speaker wire. It comes with the RCA. Um, so this is the main speaker, main primary, whatever you want to call it. You got a power on, power off. 
you got a volume here you can do aux in so if you have 3.5 you can go in you can use headphones with it um and on the back you have tuning for highs and lows you have quarter inch inputs uh balanced and then you have rcas unbalanced and then you know speaker to move over there uh pair button power right here let me just look at this box there we go found it now this also comes with a power adapter to mail for a receptacle which we will be needing this so we got that um then out of this the only thing i'm going to need out of this is the connecting speaker wire but you also have uh it looks like quarter three quarter to rca i mean 3.5 sorry 3.5 to rca and 3.5 to 3.5 so if you want to use quarter inch balance cables you'll have to purchase those yourself because they're not supplied in the box now let's get these little foam pads on the bottom and we are ready to set this up uh, like i said i already ran the rca cable because i got that yesterday and it's already in place ready to go just peel these little guys off stick them on the bottom here so that we have a little vibration protection and then we are good to go Sorry if it's not fancy enough, but it is the bottom. I'm not worried about it. All right, that's done. So now I am ready to put them where they're going to go. I'm going to put them over here by the monitor. So I got to move some stuff around, but I, I know what happened with that overhead shot, right? The overhead cam, like basically I use this app called Larix and it's a broadcasting app. It sends out an SRT signal uh, to a Bella Box relay server. You can grab it in OBS and you can just use your phone anywhere, right? Well, maybe I'll do a video about that another time, but that thing just did whatever it wanted to do. It uh, messed up the white balance. It messed up the exposure. It messed up everything. So sorry about that. I'll be sure to never do that again. Um, I'll grab this Sony and take it off of the uh, arm over here and at least hook that up. So then I know everything's dialed in. Now, what are we going to do here? So I've got some things I've got to take apart, move around. And uh, yeah, let's just get to it. Stream beats, by the way. Got two speakers here, and then got the other speakers here. I've got it as loud as I can get it, and it sounds like it could take plenty more. The only thing missing is a subwoofer, but hold up, here we go. All right, I think we all can agree that that is enough of that, right? So I just wanted to test it on the phone. Obviously, the microphone inside the phone is not going to do the sound any justice, but these things sound awesome, especially for the price point and the fact that they're monitors. They just sound great. And I literally pushed uh, the, the track up because I didn't realize the track was kind of down. And I got it to the point that they were really getting testy, bro. Really getting testy, super loud. You know, for the for 3.5, and if you need bigger, you can get bigger. But for the price point, these things rock. Maybe add a subwoofer in, you know, in the future. Maybe. I don't know. But I'll tell you this much. Uh, if you're gaming or if you're podcasting, these things are awesome. Especially if you're podcasting because um, I won't get too into detail about it. But if you're using a Rodecaster Pro 2 like I have, then... Maybe you don't want to wear headphones. Maybe you don't want to wear earbuds. And maybe you want to be able to talk into the microphone and hear everything going on. The music that's playing, the game, um, hear alerts going off, whatever the case is. Inside the Rodecaster Pro 2, 
you can actually mute the output of the microphone so that the monitors, uh, uh, that the reference monitors, there's a, there's a port on the back that goes strictly to the monitors and it will eliminate the microphone. So that's pretty awesome because anybody that's ever done that with analog knows that you'll get feedback. There's really no way to do it with analog, you know? So the Rodecaster Pro 2 adds that special gem in there where you can mute it, talk into the mic, and it doesn't go out to the speakers and you can have the speakers running and hear everything. So that's a tight upgrade, man. Ranimal, you're a real one. Thank you guys for watching this, hanging out. Be sure to sub, all that, bell, everything, you know. And listen, like I said, give me pointers, you know. I think that this, it looks decent in here, but maybe this thing's riddled with noise. I don't know, dude. Like, if you have some input, let me have it. See you next time.